uh, moving on, Bridget, you wanted to talk about the heat partnership, is it? Yeah, um, if I just, uh, I'm aware of the time, but um, if I, so well, now we can have the fun with the technology. Um, I, would it be okay if I share my screen? Yep, you should have permission. Great. Um, let's see whether I can still broadcast. It is very confusing. Um, I'm on an iPad and so I'm hoping. Yeah, can you see um, a presentation there now? Yeah, that's good. Okay. Um, oh, look, I've got John and Jane on the slides as well. Uh, yeah. who were on this call. So that's nice. It's always nice to get, give other people kudos. And I think, um, uh, I don't know. I, I, gave a, I gave a presentation this week down to a group called the Internal Drainage Board. It's a, it's a very long standing organization. So I popped this slide on and this quote because I use it a lot, but I value it a lot. That a society grows great when old men plant trees whose shade they know they shall never sit. Um, so I just, I think that part of what I try to do is find ways to, to make an impact that will be lasting. Um, and sorry, there's too many words on this slide, but I think that many of us know that peat is important and that peat is an important resource and that it is here in North Somerset. I don't know if everybody knows actually. So Somerset's a bit more famous for peat than North Somerset, but we hold, we have land that, that has peat in it. And it's a carbon store. And um, I apologize that I didn't get a better, there's some really blooming great quotes about how much carbon it stores. Um, uh, and but when it drives to the air, peat emits CO2, um, and that peatlands are emitting 20 million tons of CO2 per year, um, and but only a very small amount is in good condition. Um, but there's an opportunity to change that. So sometimes, no, much of the time, things that we want to do to do with climate change and to do with responding to the climate emergency, remaining, preserving the remaining peat safely restoring the peat wherever possible um and and this is kind of for anybody who's a geographer they may have heard these things before nature-based solutions the way we use our land to eat to hold water has so many different benefits hopefully for us in our area hopefully to help manage some flooding um but really good for um ecosystems and biodiversity so there are many species in North Somerset who that would have thrived more on wetter land and because of our farming practices because of um, our need to build houses and our need to build roads there is less wetlands around um, uh, it, it, there's one point there that says phosphates you know actually quite a number of people are, are more and more aware that the state of there are too many phosphates in our rivers so anything that can be done to support our biodiversity Think about different agriculture you know, there it even has clean air um i will bring the slides down and have a bit more of a talk about the peatland partnership in just a moment but right now national government has a live consultation um and i'll put the link in chat but what the wildlife trusts have done is they've got their page up which says kind of take action but what it does is you can put your name down but it also has the questions, some key questions being asked on the national government consultation, but it's not horribly clunky. And basically by completing it there, um, you can, it then is feeding into the, into the government um, question. So the, so the consultation is a call for an immediate end to peat sales. And so I, I think I'll, I'll bring down my slides, but I will just say two more. Um, points that I want to make. So, can you can you see me without slides now? Am I back? Um, so, what I'll just say is that there are two things going on. So, there's one is um, this national consultation that says, should we end the retail of peat now? And something that I just wanted to inform you about, which is I guess it's just come to me in the past um, week or two, or is being more informed, is that obviously we can go into garden centres and we can choose to buy peat free. 
But when we choose to go and buy uh, a pot of coriander or a pot of basil or some pansies or Aldi, Tesco's, Waitrose, they all sell potted plants as a kind of quick when you're buying later in the season and things. There's no comment there about whether it's been grown in peat. So there's this kind of hidden horticultural sector that we as the consumer are not seeing. So we may make a, a good choice when we buy a, a, a bag of compost, but there's a load of hidden peat use going on. And certainly in the horticultural sector that's going on. There's a load of complexities about that, but that's the reason why the Wildlife Trust and other groups are saying, you need to ban it now. We've tried the nicely nicely. We know we're in a situation where we need to stop releasing carbon. This is the one of the things that could happen. One of the things that I liked about hearing in January that there's a new peatland partnership was A, that it felt very local to me. B, that I guess my family's from Tickenham area, it's low lying land, so that, that speaks to my heritage. Um, but, but see, DEFRA's got money for this. For They've got money for the next two or three years to do a load of investigative work, to work with multi-partners, to work with people who work in farming and extracting it now and help them transition to finding other incomes. So it's not about just pointing at people and saying you're the bad guy, but it's about helping them transfer to a different kind of income and future. They didn't have a chair, so you know me. I put my hand up and said, I'll be interim chair for a year because I'd like to be, feel like I, I know I'm making a difference. Anyway, I'd like to make a difference in another patch, <laughs> even more. Um, I'm too greedy, but uh, so that's what's going on. And um, it's kind of to do with being my counsellor, but, but it's a bit of a, a, a different set of people and I'm excited to be doing that. Thanks, Bridget. If anyone does go on and do the DEFRA consultation, um, which I did, you have to do a double take because it starts off, the opening paragraph says, it was planned to ban peach sales in 2020. We're consulting to see whether we should bring that forward. <laughs> well, hey, <laughs> what's happened there? Um, I think it's meant to read 2028. Um, so, you know, even on their consultation, as Bridget said, it, so it is a bit clunky. Um, I couldn't even get the, check the typos. Uh, any questions for Bridget? Uh, I think the other thing is, uh, my understanding is the peat in Gordano Valley is quite unique because most peat is, is it acid or alkali? Um, and Gordano Valley is one of the only places in the country that where, where it's got the other one. So that is, is very uh, critical, apparently. Uh, John, I think you, you put your hand up. Yeah, I've just uh, just a bit of a bone to pick with Richard. She put a photograph of me saying that an old man would sit under a tree um, on there, and also I. I think she's just getting back at me for the years when I used to teach geography. So I feel a little bit missed by all this today. Um, I, like, I, see, I think this is a brilliant idea. I say I'm very interested in this as well. So thanks for getting me back on the geography. Uh, keep the insults to yourself next time. Thank you. Stephen? Oh, just a quick one. Can you put a link in the chat for that uh, thing? I'm trying. I know all my technology is kind of creaking at the idea of doing more than one thing at a time, which is frustrating. But yes, I will try my best to do that. Thanks, Bridget. I could just flag a, a, a few more things coming up. Um, please, if you can, block out the... Um, afternoon of the 21st of April in your diaries because we, we've managed to get uh, Carla Denya for three or four hours in the afternoon to come and talk to North Somerset Green Party. Um, we're not quite sure yet. Uh, we only found out yesterday so we're working out exactly what that's going to be um, but ideally probably some time with the candidates, um, councillors and candidates and then obviously a um, wider members uh, public session 
So if anyone's got any particular ideas or, or offering you know, to help arrange any of that, uh, please get in touch. But um, we'd obviously like as many of you to come along as possible and, and have the chance to ask Carla as my new co-leader uh, any questions. Uh, the date was the 21st of April in the afternoon. So it's uh, during the Easter holidays, unfortunately, for those of you with children or who are going away. But uh, it, was, it was either that or May Day, <laughs> um, which probably was just as bad. Um, the other thing I'm trying to arrange and um, is a workshop on, uh, I think, when the previous co-leaders resigned, um, one of the issues was um, gender, um, yeah, issues around gender, uh, LGBTIQA uh, plus issues, those sorts of things. And yeah, I must admit, I, I don't really understand any of that and, and have shied away from it. Um, but Sunil's asked if we can try and organise a workshop on that and the, the relevant group in the Green Party are offering to run workshops. So we're trying to get some dates for that. Um, that would be a couple of hours online for um, everyone that's interested. Um, we'll be starting leafleting in some of the wards in about three to four weeks. So you'll start getting lots of action network uh, action day notices coming out. Um, please come out and help us on that. Um, at our next uh, members meeting, we will be having, we will be hopefully adopting the prospective candidates we have. Um, we have uh, quite a few. And uh, so the idea will be for all of them to put in their, uh, their forms and their, their words about themselves and for us to have an opportunity to question them and then hopefully approve them as uh, suitable candidates for the council elections next year. Sorry, uh, Simeon. Um, thanks. Thanks, David. Um, I, I wanted to talk about the... Um, the uh, trans rights um, activism, um, just to, uh, in the run up to the workshop, which I'm really looking forward to. Now, um, I think I think all of us, all of us are um, open minded and supportive of people, uh, adults um, wishing to um, present their sexuality in any way they want to. Um, and, and, a, and a year ago, I, I, wishing to be on board with uh, what I thought was trans rights, I, um, I changed my pronoun on my Twitter. I changed my, I wrote my he, his pronouns. Um, and then, then I got into a discussion with, um, I, I was curious about uh, why JK Rowling's was uh, receiving yeah. a lot of uh, anger for, for what people described as trans phobia. And I, and I read her, her response, which I encourage everyone to read. And I, I read uh, Stephanie, uh, Ka oh, Kathleen Stock's um, Material Girls, which, which describes um, some of the dangerous sides of what I believe uh, trans rights activists are trying to do, uh, which um, I, I have recently signed the Declaration on Women's Sex-Based Rights and there is rumours that this may mean that I will be um, asked to leave the Green Party. I, I think quietly, uh, while, while I remain someone who endeavours to not be homophobic, who celebrates everyone's opportunity to, you know, if people feel that they, they're gen they're, they're, they have a dysphoria in their gender, you know, I, I teach students who have gender dysphoria and I'm warm and supportive for them. But what gender rights activists actually want is an affront to um, feminism and they're, 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 they're mutually exclusive and I urge all of you to, to take this very seriously. I mean, you know, mm. I, it's crept up on us. Um, so, 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 well, yeah, so that's, that's my 
that's my that's what I'd like to share. That I, I think this is yeah. in, quietly incredibly important. And and like Shaha Ali uh, to be to be received to be as um, um, pushed out of the out of the party. Uh, and Emma Emma I can't remember the G the Green Party. One of the co leaders of the women's group has also been suspended um, for for just for, for trying to have a debate about this. Um, th thank you for listening, guys. Yeah, and um, the, yeah, thanks, Neil, for flagging that. And the you know, that's why we're trying to organise the workshop for the to hear you know what the LGBTIQA plus group in, within the Green Party. Um, you know, they're where they're coming from, their angle, and then that we can you know decide for ourselves um, where we go with that really. But uh, yeah, there is, uh, we have lost a couple of members over this issue. Um, and yeah, I, you know, I certainly feel I, I need to understand it a lot better than I do. So um, we'll try and get that workshop organised and uh, obviously hopefully a few people there were uh, expressing uh, support for understanding more about it. So we will try and do that. Is that okay? Any any other comments on that? Is this the issue of people? Are, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Is this the issue of biological males uh, who declare themselves as female for whatever reason, wanting to go into a women's only space? Is that the only issue that's that uh, is an issue? Uh, I don't think it, that is one of the issues. I don't think it's the only one. Sunil? Oh, um, well, that, that is one of them. And then sports. Um, um, I mean, I mean it's, it's, I le I've learned so much reading into this. I mean, we're, we're not talking about intersex people. We're talking about people who are um, born in a, in, as male, as female, and then um, what the what the uh, trans right activists are suggesting is that if if for example as a, as born a, born a man if I if I identified as a woman I wouldn't need to seek hormonal or or transition I wouldn't need to have any surgery and I'd still wish to. Uh, Compete, for example, in women's sport to uh, be in uh, female safe spaces, changing rooms, uh, rape uh, counselling facilities, hospital wards. Um, you know, to be all, all in intents purposes to be a woman. Um, yeah. Yeah. That, well, that, I yeah. Can, yeah, I can see how that's the problem because uh, <laughs> if somebody whose biological male declares themselves as female, they're not that different from biological males who don't. And women can feel uncomfortable about that. And I, my personal feeling is that if they're biologically male, they shouldn't be allowed in the female-only space. Can I... Uh, yeah, so, you know, that's the purpose of getting the workshops of we can hopefully understand the issues and, and then we can uh, have a view on it. Uh, Tom? Yes, I mean, I think we, we are in danger of having the workshop now, but it is a, um, an important issue because um, if we were to um, um, have the resources, and this is a big question, a, a huge resource implications of providing places which are safe, for totally safe for women and places which are totally non-judgmental and available for people who either, however they define themselves. If they're going to have sports, uh, sports uh, uh, competitions which are, you know, which are open and non-judgmental, but also ones which are safe for women, 
and not uh, disadvantage them by people who simply serve declare as women. And there's a whole lot of society issues, both in buildings, in organizations, and things where if we can accommodate both aims, there are, you know, the whole society has got to rethink how we organize ourselves and how we organize spaces. And I think it's a big issue. Yeah. It's inherently, it, you, Tom, it's not just that, because to accept those things is to undermine women's rights. Right. Can we... Back to the, it's a workshop, it's a work, let's, let's put it in the workshop so that we can all yeah. come prepared, come talk about things and, and have that. But right now I think that we, it, it's, it's that David made the intention to have that workshop and I agree with the intention and I think you've got other people agreeing with the intention so that we can talk, ask, feel free to ask difficult questions while we each work out how we feel about those things and what there are the consequences to those things. So thank you for raising it. Thank you for reading about it, Sunil. Thank you for raising it. And let's make a proper space so that we can all talk about that again with the support of, of facilitation and et cetera, because I think we all do feel that, that we are looking for a space to have that conversation, but it wasn't now. <laughs> um, so I have a couple of AOBs, but uh, only when you're ready, David. Yeah, go on then. Um, so one thing is, um, I'm interested that XR are uh, holding an event in London. I can't remember if it's the 9th or the 19th of April. Um, I think I want to go. Um, myself and Joe joined a call on, th on Sunday night that I think I promoted through. Anyway, I'm interested to know whether anybody hears any news about whether North Somerset XR, Western XR, you know, to Bob, if it's on your radar at all, anybody who gets more information, I'd like to know more. Um, so that's kind of, if others within the, our Greens locally fancy that, then, then maybe we can talk about being together on that. Um, I think a little update from the councillors, North Somerset Council is, is flying the flag for Ukraine. We, that's not enough, but we are doing it. Um, the Green councillors are proposing to bring a warm homes, warmer homes motion in April's council meeting which is partly in response to rising energy bills, but the fact that everybody deserves a warm and safe home, but it ties in with climate objectives and, and um, it's a model motion that Greens across the country are using. In that April meeting, the, the procurement of the council's energy contract will come up, but we've done a lot of work to make sure that it's the greenest contract that we can, but of course, escalating prices make that very challenging. Um, I'm quite excited because I'm working with some residents, some, some people in Western, I think precious plastics might happen. So if you're interested by something called precious plastics, give it a Google, there's lots of videos. And finally, the local plan, the draft local plan consultation will go live on Monday. Um, I've asked Phil to um, look at some of the uh, key points where it's like there's policies that are specifically about uh, raising those standards on on climate change, on on reduced carbon, on energy efficiency, just so that maybe there's a bit of a crib sheet that Phil can provide that helps Green members know some different points where they could feedback that that feel like they're good, strongly influenced Green stuff. Nonetheless, uh, it is a local plan that is asked to deliver 20,000 houses in our area that is north the which is central government saying build 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 will end our housing situation or will make somebody rich um it's pretty challenging for backwell and i will have a difficult uh time politically for for a while um that's it from me whistle stop i don't know if stephen's hand is new is new go on then Look, oh, uh, extinction extinction rebellion last last time i looked um the, the the police were very keen on listing them as an extremist group. What's what's the update on the status that they have? I don't know. I haven't looked, but I, all I know is that that House of Lords amendment did fall. I don't know if anything's been heard again since then um, on the policing bill. Yeah, you know where I'm fell. going. So potentially, yeah. yeah, potentially we'll see how long it is before this government tries to shut people down. I'd rather use my right to be on the street now than, than get arrested in it. It wasn't the intention. 
I guess I'm just airing opportunities for people to get involved. It doesn't mean I think that you have to support that in that way. In other no, people. the police have conceded that putting them on the extremist list next to the far right group and then distributing it to schools was an error of judgment, um, uh, which they rapidly admitted. But they, you know, obviously, you know, it's like any smear campaign, the damage is quickly done. Mm. Uh, one last thing. Uh, Peter, Richard, asked, hand up. Peter asked at the, uh, sorry, Richard, yeah. you're on mute. Um, yeah, just to say that uh, our Jenny Jones was listed by, um, uh, as, by the police as a domestic extremist. And now she's in the House of Lords, so I think we can just uh, ignore the police on this one. Uh, Peter asked earlier on about going back to face-to-face -face meetings, so could I just ask for up, to, up or downs? Who who's, feels ready to go back to face-to-face -face meetings? Who would prefer to stick on Zoom for a bit? I'm quite happy with face-to-face um, -face oh, meetings just, now. Can we just have thumbs up or down? So, got a fair number of thumbs up, but not um, no thumbs down. So the people who aren't doing anything are they thumbs down or or not worried? Abstain. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, I mean, with the better weather coming, anyway, we were hoping to get back to some face-to-face -face meetings. So we'll endeavour to factor that in as soon as we can. Okay, this is anything else. Thank you all for turning out tonight and a very good meeting and different speakers, different subject. Um, um, this time last week, none of this was arranged apart from the, <laughs> the vote on the constitution. So uh, it's been a very good, uh, good evening. So, uh, oh, other people volunteered to, to talk and do stuff. So thank you all.